to the real world and I am your host Daryl Terrell today we're doing it from the homestead so you know what's going on with the coronavirus but today we have episode 20 with Mike Hearn podcaster photographer what's up bro what's going on mate appreciate you having me on it's uh it's awesome spot yeah you know hey we're all camped out you know so tell us a little bit about yourself so I obviously have a little bit of an accent. I uh, come from Wales in the UK. I came to Oklahoma in August 2011 to play golf in college. Mm-hmm. So I played golf at SNU, Southern Nazarene in Bethany for four years. Uh, got into real estate when I graduated. Uh, luckily, when you're an international student, they kinda, you can apply for a work visa. It lasts a year. I applied for a work visa. Um, got that for a year. Got into real estate because I didn't want to waste that year just in mm-hmm. case I was going to go home. So... I got into real estate, so you know our Oklahoma weather's yeah not great, right? It's very uh, inconsistent. So I wanted to take a day off to play golf if I you know if I wanted to. So that's why I got into real estate. <laughs> uh, and then actually, the guy that got me into real estate, I met my wife through him, and he's now my brother-in-law. So nice. <laughs> he married my wife's sister, I guess. Uh, so yeah, uh, got married like eight nine months later. That was not planned, right? That was like. If you've seen the you know, proposal movie, that's yeah. kind of what happened. Uh, it's like, oh, I've got to get married to stay? Oh, okay, I better ask. And look, I'd already asked her parents first, right? <laughs> so that was okay, but that was a bit of a shock. But she's still around, so somehow, right? I'm still here. You're she's, still here. She's awesome. So yeah, I've been married like four years in February. Awesome. Yeah, so, so how was your transition coming from Wales to here? Oh, honestly, it sucked. First month was miserable. Uh, I was kind of late, too. I, I didn't come... I, 21 my freshman year I turned 21 in September so got late started late as a freshman hated my first month missed home I'm such a mother's boy right so I'm just <laughs> like, and then 2011 it wasn't FaceTime wasn't amazing it was Skype and still it wasn't you know I was an international student with no money so I didn't have an iPhone or anything like that um, but it, pro- it got progressively better um, made a huge change when I when I went home and realized that Christmas that nothing had Wow. You know, that was like, oh, I, I kind of have an opportunity here. That helped, mind switch, and then slowly kind of got used to it. Uh, first year went by really quick. And then I remember at the end of my first summer, mm-hmm. going back for my sophomore year, I was like, I can't wait to go back. Um, and then, you know, junior year, I never thought I was going to stay. But senior year, I was like, oh, yeah, I, th- I think I want to stay now. It's, it's, it's <laughs> pretty good. Yeah, it's not too I'd bad I'd always now. go home during the summer, so I never saw, like, storm season, mm-hmm. right? So I never saw, like, you know, we finished school in May. I never saw any big storms, so I kind of got you know a false sense of what Oklahoma was, right? Uh, but yeah, so that's kind of the transition was wasn't great, but I'm you know I got through it. Awesome. So one of my goals was to actually interview a podcaster, and so yeah. me watching you on Instagram, how did you yourself get into podcasting? Uh, so started like the Instagram page. This is Oklahoma, and. Mm-hmm. and I have this passion for photography, but I could never get out to take photos. So I just started started sharing people's pictures. Mm-hmm. Um, and now I've started taking more of my own. But back then I thought, well, you know, there's only so much you can share with a picture. Let's do something with that. And initially it was supposed to be like a video series where I could sit in front of a camera and, and have a, you know, the quote YouTube life, right? right? Put myself in front of a camera and I was terrible. <laughs> Couldn't, you know, the light goes on and I have a script and I can't remember what I've just said. I'm just awful. So the guy who was helping me record said, you know, what about a podcast? I'm like, sure, I listened to podcasts, why not? Did a little bit of research, there wasn't that many in Oklahoma, like big Oklahoma ones. Yeah, let's go down that road. Um, and here we are, like 145 episodes later. Wow. So that kind of just went, yeah, it was, and initially, and I tell this a lot, like initially it was, you know, I was still doing real estate, and mm-hmm. I, I still am doing real estate, but I'm never like that. I never have been that knock on doors, hardcore on the phone salesperson, I just, didn't enjoy it if you don't enjoy it you're not going to be very good at it and so initially the podcast was you know a way to market my real estate right and i did two or three episodes and i'm like this is this is there's more to this than selling houses there's more to like this than you know using the building this community base and then selling to them right like the the cheesy real estate way um as people who know real estate or have seen the real estate memes recently you know coronavirus (laughs) like yeah, like I just, so I still do real estate, but I made the decision then to not like put anything on my Instagram or anything on the podcast 
you know, to say, hey, I'm a real estate agent. You should no ads, right? No real estate no ads, ads, nothing like that. So people will know when people who I ask mm -hmm. or have on as guests will bring it up, but I never will say, uh, you know, you should buy a house with me and do kind of information stuff. So awesome. Yeah. Is podcasting helping you as far as financially? Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. And, and like, weirdly, I've done better in real estate because I have a podcast. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's my wife was like, you know, I've been doing a podcast two years now. So the Instagram, nice. The Instagram's been up for almost three and the podcast has been two. So it's two, two in March. And, you know, the first year my wife's like, why are you spending all this time doing Instagram and podcasting? Uh, I did okay in real estate that year, but my last year, um, I did a lot better in real estate without even like posting about real estate, which well, I, that was a shock. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, recently got our tax bill and was like, oh, okay. Because <laughs> I don't really look at it. You know, it's mm -hmm. in the business account, right? Just head down, keep, keep you know, doing podcasts. And then got the tax bill at the end of the year. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, we need to prepare for that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which, is, oh, which is a good thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, makes me want to keep doing it. Uh, and I think eventually it will probably take over. The income from the podcast side will will take over from the real estate. Uh, recently, we announced that the Oklahoma Hall of Fame have come on board as a sponsor. Nice. So they can they sponsor one episode a week uh, for the rest of the year, which is great um, yeah. for me. You know, like I get to be associated with mm -hmm. you know such an organization like that, and everyone that's a so you know who doesn't want to be in the Oklahoma Hall of Fame. And you go down the list of everyone that's in the Hall of Fame, and yeah, there's there's some pretty inspirational people. So that was a huge plus and looking forward to, to hopefully getting some more on board for the rest of the year. Awesome. You know, when people speak of goals, here it is, guys. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Well, I want goals you know, in this setup. I'll tell you how this. <laughs> this is good. Well, you know, Stephen Austin Films obviously oh, yeah. knows what he's talking about and what he's doing. I'm just glad to have him on board. Yeah. With we'll chat after this. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, besides podcasting, you're, I see that you obviously have a passion about photography as well because you put out some pretty dope stuff yeah so how have you been working along with that on top of your podcast yeah so with and, and initially a lot of the pictures i'd say probably 90 percent of the pictures i post aren't mine right mm -hmm. there are other amazing photographers around the state and that's why we get to look at our amazing sunsets and why i get to post sunset pictures every day is because people tag me in them and Thankfully, in Oklahoma, we usually get a pretty good sunset every day. Yeah. Uh, but for me, I, you know, I, I had a photography class. I did pretty well my senior year. I did pretty well the, the years leading up to my senior year. So my, like, last semester, I had 12 hours to graduate, and I had one business class, and the rest were, you know, do what you want classes, mm -hmm. right? So I picked photography and got into photography through that. Um, the school provided a camera. And nice. When I graduated, obviously, that camera was gone, you know, <laughs> <Yeah. in> school. <laughs> So kind of just like I, you know, hell, I've gone out with friends and kind of messed with their camera and iPhones were great and stuff like that. But another thing recently has been uh, Bedford's camera in town yeah. have jumped on board as well and they said, look, if you want to get back into photography, we'll help you do that. So I've been taking classes there. Um, they definitely, had, you know, the podcast and the video has gone. It's, 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 the level has gone up a little bit mm -hmm. because you know it's not to the level that you guys have, but it's better than a GoPro. <laughs> right, right, right. So they've been helping me with that. So yeah, like my goal is to is to take this podcast on the road, travel more, and go and take photos myself as well. So yeah, that's kind of where my photography comes out. But I have a huge passion for you know, I play golf, sport photography is a lot of fun. I have a huge passion for uh, cars and automotive mm -hmm. stuff as well. So now you're talking. Taking pictures of cars is not easy. <laughs> Uh, but you know, there's a. I've been looking at a lot of you know YouTube videos, and Larry Chan is like one of the best photographers out there. So he has a pretty good YouTube series. I follow him quite a bit. And then uh, another thing that that the Instagram page doesn't show that much is people. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone wants to look at sunsets, but every time I post a picture or a portrait of someone, it never does that well. But I don't care if it doesn't do that well, right? Like it's not the goal of you know to get likes and comments. Mm -hmm. The goal is to share people's stories. So. Every time I do a podcast with someone, I share their headshot and, and their little thing about them. Well, that, you know, the post everyone never gets that many likes and stuff. Yeah. But I, you know, sometimes I'd, I'd interview someone and, and they may not have a professional headshot. And I'm mm -hmm. like, send me a photo. And they send me a terrible selfie that they post, you know, taken of themselves. And I'm like, I need to learn how to take photo, you know, photos of people as well so right. I can be there to take that photo. So that's another reason to get into and more into just photography from my side is to pretty much all around, right? There's, you know, there's 
sports, this car mm-hmm. talk thing, and this report just got really good. So awesome. With um, you being in, in both of these that I would call art creative things that you enjoy doing, what are some may give three tips to anyone that's listening? Yeah, where on the photography side and the podcasting side, uh, three good reasons to get started. Uh, three good reasons to get started. Um, well, the podcasting side, uh, I hate listening to podcasts that just like read from a script kind of thing. Like mm-hmm. we're having a conversation. This is a lot more enjoyable to listen mm-hmm. to, right? And you can tell we're both engaged. Correct. One of the things that I hate listening to is someone who's just reading from a script, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's one thing is, you know, to have a conversation, right? Editing's great. You can edit con- conversations out in the way you want them, mm-hmm. but the way to get someone comfortable is to sit and have a conversation with them. Right. So that would be one tip. Um, obviously, sound quality is another big thing mm-hmm. in podcasting. You can find a quiet room. You know, that's that's a huge thing. And I think another thing is, like, I know we don't have it on now, but um, when I've had guests on in the past, mm-hmm. having the guests wear headphones is yes. another big thing. Like, mm-hmm. And that's something that, because as long as once they can hear themselves in, you know, they're moving around in the microphone and depending on what microphone you use, it's much easier for them to understand the sound. Right. So that'd be one thing. Um, and then the photography side, take photos of what you love doing, right? Like there's so many YouTube videos out there mm-hmm. as well. And, you know, your specific camera that you want, it's not a live button. There's so many ways to just, you know, photography doesn't have to be being an art form, right? It can be anything. Right. It doesn't have to be, mm-hmm. you know, one thing is not, yeah, you can have professional critique you and you're going to, you're going to be you as critic, but what you think is good, then that's art, right? That's mm-hmm. good to you. So that would be my photography one. I don't know if, I don't know if I can put three together, but yeah, just start, right? Mm-hmm. You know, just, that'd be another. Just start taking pictures. What about a good editing app for uh, someone that may be listening right now? Editing app. So I use, um, so I use Pro Tools. Pro Tools. Pro Tools, I think I pay, it's like $30 a month, maybe, something like that. Um, I had two awesome friends of mine uh, who have a production company and do all this sound and video stuff, they made presets for me. Amazing stuff. If you need those presets, let me know and I'll <laughs> put you in touch with them because they, they made it so much easy, so easy because I'm not a tech guy. Mm-hmm. So they were like, just download it in, click preset, and it's good to go. Awesome. Thank you so much. So yeah, find a good sound and tech guy to, to help you, which you already have, right? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right. <just good. laughs> you know, you got that covered. <laughs> so yeah, that would be editing. And then... Uh, so I have uh, uh, Anchor as well. I use Anchor mm-hmm. FM. So mm-hmm. Anchor FM is another thing, but I use Anchor for another podcast I have. But um, I use uh, Podbean for my Podbean. Podbean. Mm-hmm. Podbean for just to get my podcast released. And it's really easy to distribute and make edits. And my grammar is terrible, so there's always something in the <laughs> description that's wrong. It takes me five minutes to change it. Yeah, those there's some definitely some you know better podcast. Um, Places where you can like Anchor and Podbean, yeah. where you can go and they can distribute your podcast out there to yeah. everyone. And you know, one of the things that I personally love about you personally and what I see you are often doing, you're not just there's so many different people in Oklahoma that are doing so many different things in the community, and you're always having different guests. What what do you look for when you're 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 going after someone to have them on your show? Uh, so initially, it was like, when you when I started out, like I want to have all these high profile people on, right? They have to have a big social media, so it's going to help me grow. And that lasted maybe 10 episodes. And I realized <laughs> that like, okay, Russell Westbrook's not going to be on my podcast. <laughs> uh, not yet, anyway. Uh, so I, I, and then I thought, well, you know, everyone knows these businesses, right? So but people don't know the story behind the business. Mm-hmm. So I started reaching out to businesses, you know, everyone sees that business and, and they have no idea who the owner is. They have no idea why they started. They just, they read their little bio on the website, which is never the full story, and that's it. Right. So that was it. That was for a while. Um, and then I just started interviewing people that I just knew and people that are friends of mine because I realized that sitting down with a friend for an hour or an hour and a half or however long that is, I haven't had that opportunity for a long time, right? Especially right. in today's world. You know, mm-hmm. when, when are you going to sit down with someone that you know and have a legit conversation with no phones, mm-hmm. you know, no, no distractions? distractions and just chat so I started having my friends on and that's one of the reasons why we started a golf segment for the podcast I think we're on sort of seven or eight now and that's just to get four of my mates together that we haven't played golf since college and we get we, you know we hang out for a just week hang out for an hour a week yeah 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 so that's, that's awesome that's where we're at. But yeah 
So despite everything that's going on with the coronavirus, mm-hmm. what are some of the precautions you have taken with your real estate business? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how has it affected your podcast, if any at all? Not right now. Podcast hasn't really been affected right now. Um, I have been looking into how we can do it over the phone and FaceTime and all that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. There's, there's definitely ways to do that. The audio isn't going to be that good, but drastic right. measures, if we have to do that, then mm-hmm. then that's what I'll do. But I, I have quite a few in the bank. I probably have 10 episodes just ready to go. Um, well, some of them haven't been edited yet, but they're, they're pre-recorded. Mm-hmm. They're, I usually stay quiet ahead. Um, you know, like you, you mentioned, this one's going out like tomorrow, right? Mm-hmm. You've got a pretty big turnaround, and, and I can do that as well. It's just nice to have that available. Yeah. Uh, as far as my real estate, it's been pretty, it's been all right. It's nothing that's nice. too bad. I had people, with friends reach out. They said, look, we're, we're thinking of selling our house. You know, let's chat. Uh, we don't want to meet. Great. I'll FaceTime you. We'll talk about <laughs> it. You know, like I can sit in the house. No shaking hands. No shaking hands. <laughs> it's fine, right? So we can do that. But also, you know, they said, yeah, well, I mean, we're not ready yet, but we'll be ready once all this craziness dies down. That's fine. So it's, it's actually been, it hasn't been too bad. Do you have any personal thoughts on this coronavirus and everything that's going on? Uh, I don't. I, it's. I've never been someone who worries too much, mm-hmm. uh, and I'm also probably a bit naive as well to just think oh, I'll be fine. I don't worry about anything, you know. See what happens. But I think once I'm sure it's going to hit home soon enough, right? We've right. already seen someone pass in Tulsa about it, and yeah, like I, you know, I, I went to Walmart the other day just to see. What my wife's like, I just want to go and see what the shelves look like. I'm like, well, I've been two days ago and it's empty. So if you just want to come and hang out and look at it, like, we still need a few things, but yeah, that's kind of strange. Uh, but yeah, I think we'll just, you know, there's a lot of like nonsense going out on social media, right? Of just fake news and all this stuff and just look at the right places. Like the CDC knows what they're doing or they seem to know what they're doing. I just, you know, I think that's all we can do is like not panic not panic buy mm-hmm. doesn't say anywhere you should buy a toilet paper right exactly you know so like yeah well I'm share a cigarette by the way yeah exactly um i think if, you, if you're stuck for work right now i think crest are they're hiring you know pretty drastically to mm-hmm. keep up with demand and i'm sure people working for uber eats and all these other apps are slammed right so oh if you've got God. a car and you want to deliver food and you need some quick money yeah again that's definitely a way to make money if you're self-employed like me or you, you know just your job is what based on commission or whatever it is like that's the people that are really affected isn't it right you know, it's it's the people that have all the cancellations of thing. i have a friend in in the uh, the music industry um he does light sound and music and stuff and the tours cancel like he was at, yeah he was going to be yeah. at coachella you know he mm-hmm. was working at coachella and had to cancel and those are big deals huge deals yeah Especially yeah, so. if you, you know, if it's his first time yeah. or if it's his second time or even if right. it's something that he goes to yearly, yeah. you know, once you get accustomed to doing something like that and it doesn't happen, I'm sure it's just a yeah. effect financially if you're getting paid right, you're to counting do it. on a paycheck. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, uh, but yeah, I think it's, yeah, we just got to be sensible. As hard as that is for people to hear, yeah. like some people just react and go mad. Or, and, you know, I saw people buying ammo as well. <laughs> What are people buying ammo for? It's a virus, right? You can't, you can't kill it with, a, can't kill it with a nine millimeter, right? So yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, you heard what he said, guys. You know, just you know, think and be sensible and be reasonable on your thoughts and why or your precautions about what is going on right now. Things like this has happened in the past. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's the end of the world, but you know, one thing is for certain, the more you sit around and do nothing is when you absolutely start to drive yourself stir crazy. So get out, get active. That doesn't mean you have to be in crowds. That doesn't mean you have to be compromising your immune system. Um, if you're someone with lupus or some other, um, something of, of that nature, just stay active and and. Be precautious for yourself. So, but with that being said, you know, having you here for me means a lot. And having Steven over here coming here today yeah. to the house, I, you know, it really, for me, I kept banging my head against a wall. You know, I did not want to let this podcast with you go today right. simply because 
I understand where Stephen and I normally do it at was going to be closed down, so why not just do it at home? Yeah. You know, I mean, there's all, if there's a will, there's a way. So just not, just giving up just because of the circumstances, right. I just felt like wasn't a good enough reason. So yeah, appreciate I, it. I appreciate you <laughs> yeah. being here. So what else is going on with you as far as five years from now? Where mm-hmm. do you see yourself? Uh, five years from now. Um, where, do I, where would I like to be? Where would you yeah, like to be? I don't think, I, I've always struggled with this stuff. I always struggle with like, you know, yeah, I'd like to be certain places, but then I never thought I'd be here five years ago. Too, yeah. Right. So, uh, where would I like to be? I like the podcast, obviously continue, keep going. Um, I'd like to have you know more partners on board that are not 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 a stupid amount of partners because they wouldn't have any value in in you know I'm not going to advertise thirty businesses because no one gets anything out of it. Right. Uh, but having you know five or six core partners that just really. Um, just want to be a part of this is Oklahoma and the brand. Mm-hmm. Um, real estate is always going to be there. Um, you know, I don't see myself not doing real estate. So it's something I enjoy doing, especially with my friends. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that sometimes our friends use a different realtor. I still feel it, right? Mm-hmm. You know, just like, oh, really? Come on, like I'm here. So, and I think every realtor feels that as well. Um, but yeah, five years time, I think the main goal, and I, I, I say this to people as well, like I want to be like the Joe Rogan of Oklahoma. Yeah. yeah right? And some people are like, what, you're going to have three-hour podcasts? Well, maybe, but I mean, like, the scale that he's at, the setup that he has, mm-hmm. you know, just the YouTube presence that he has with, with his podcasts, um, you know, the guests that he has, right? He has mm-hmm. people wanting to be on there all the time, and that's something that, you know, and I have people reach out to me, hey, I want to be on your podcast. Well, sure, let's do it. Um, you know, but on also a location. I'd love to have a, you know, a set location mm-hmm. with a studio that, we, we can go to, we can hang out at, kind of like a studio of the man cave, right? Right, right. Um, <laughs> typically for times like these, at the moment, <laughs> exactly. you know, I can have my golf set up right there in a gym and it'll just be good to go. Perfect. Uh, but yeah, I think that's that's like the goal, you know, and I, I do, um, I write out my goals every day. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've got 10 or 11 right now, just for the year. You know, in, in 2020, I will. I've got 10 or 11 of those. So just kind of getting through those and, constantly reminding myself what I'm working towards and then I think uh, you know, next year I'll probably do the same thing. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. What are some of the things since you've moved to Oklahoma that you absolutely enjoy doing? Oh, uh, I got into running. I, I've never been a runner at all. Um, typical golfer. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we, we don't work out, we don't run, right? <laughs> um, got into running, hated running in college, really. Always had to do it for workouts and stuff. Um, did my uh, first half marathon two years ago and mm-hmm. did it last year here. I was signed up to do it this year, but I just last Friday ran a thirty-one mile ultra marathon. Wow! Uh, so yeah, that was I didn't haven't done a marathon, but I ran thirty-one. I think it was thirty-one point six miles, fifty kilometers. Um, gravel race in Stillwater. Up and I didn't realize Stillwater had hills either until I got <laughs> out there. I'm like, what? Uh, so it was twenty-three hundred feet of elevation climb and. 31 miles, yeah. And I absolutely loved it. I never thought I'd say that. I was dreading going the whole time. Me and a, me and a buddy went up and he hated it more than I did. He's, <laughs> he's, 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 he's a that. CrossFit guy. He's quite a big guy and he's, he's not a runner. Um, but even he said at the end of it, like, I want to do another one of these things. That's great. Mm-hmm. Um, and I ran without headphones for the first time ever. Uh, it was weird. We, you know, I, and we ran together for about 15 miles said to me that I'm going to put my headphones in uh, and then at that point in the, the race the gravel kind of got really thick and mm-hmm. we were running in tracks right so he's behind me and I'm running and just no headphones in and I didn't put my headphones in because I knew that my phone would die as well I was tracking you know, right. like my stats and stuff but I thought once he said you know he's putting his headphones in I have no one to speak to for the next 15 miles what am I going to do and I just put my head down and got after it and I looked up a couple of times and progressively got further and further away in the end i just said all right you know like you'll be fine you're a big boy i'll, I'll catch you up at the finish line and, and i just took off and you know running another 15 16 miles if you just said that to me last year you know this would be out of your mind especially up and down kind of mud mm-hmm. gravel hills but yeah i got across the finish line and all of me you know i, I 
think I finished at 52nd out of 88 people. Wow. It wasn't, you know, I'm not a world beater by any means, but when I finished, I was so happy and you know, got across the finish line in six hours and 20 minutes. So 6.23, I think it was. But what was on your mind when you, when you decided not to uh, listen to your headphones? Uh, so the reason I signed up for it, for the ultramarathon, was um, I kind of been trying to, the older I get, and I'm 29 now, but I'm not old by any means, but the older I get, I tend to kind of want to know, I've read a lot of books and, you know, talk about comfort zone quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So, like, what have I, you know, how, who am I as a person? How do I get to know who I am as a person? And it's always by going through struggle. So I listened to too many David Goggins podcasts mm -hmm. and signed up for exactly you know, was on yeah, my mind. the right the right uh, Instagram ad came across my Instagram and it was maybe oh yeah sign up for ultramarathon in March so sure fifty kilometers thirty one miles yeah well, I can do that why not I uh, called my buddy convinced him that you know on the spot he's like sure I'll do it um, so we were set and yeah we did that and on my mind the whole time was like I just had a couple of his sayings in my head you know. Um, Taking souls, I love love that that he says. He says when you're out there and you're racing someone and you see someone ahead of you, mm -hmm. you go take their soul, right? So that was one of my things. If I pass somebody, I'm never gonna let them pass me again. Uh, so that was a one thing. And for people who don't know who David Goggins is, like taking souls, what are you talking about, right? Uh, and like for me, you know, like I said, I came fifty something out of eighty people. I'm not winning this thing, right? So right. I'm not like an elite athlete. This is just mentally to get me to see someone in front of me and overtake them. Most of the time, this person was like 50 years old, right? And had been doing ultramarathons their whole life. But I had a lot more, you know, a lot of you know, fitter bodies or younger bodies than these people. Right. Uh, but another thing was, um, my buddy said to me that morning, someone who runs ultramarathons had told him, uh, everyone can run downhills, but not everybody can run uphills. So every hill I got to, I ran up. Um, I just kept repeating that to myself. He said, you can do it, you can run it yourself. And, you know, I passed a lot of people doing that as well. Um, but yeah, outside of that, I just kept, um, I think I got a bit like, I don't know, delirious probably with like, <laughs> I had eight miles to go and I looked at my time, I'm like, well, I had eight miles to go. Maybe, maybe I can beat six hours. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, not, not remembering that the first four miles we ran, uh, you know, the first five miles were about the same. You ran those twice, right? You ran them on the way back in, you did a bit of a loop. Um, but I didn't remember that those were like quite hilly, the most right. hilliest part of the race. I'm like, I can run these in like, you know, just over an hour. Why not? And I got like a four miles left and I got 10 minutes to run four miles. I'm like, oh, it's not going to, not going to do it. But that was one thing I just kept, you just listen to your head. You just keep mm -hmm. talking to yourself. And it's amazing how clear things get when you, when you spend, you know, eight miles talking to yourself after you just ran 23 mm -hmm. and you feel fit and ready to go. And that's never, I've never felt like that before. Ever. No. Where's your motivation come from, you think? Um, uh, I think because it was my first one, it was just to finish. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was the initial goal starting out. It's like, this could, we didn't have a time goal. Like, let's just finish. But then as I progressed through the race, I got quicker and my time splits got quicker as well as I, as the miles went on, which was kind of unheard of as well. Like, I don't, you know, run 31 miles and you get quicker and quicker, you should be getting slower. Right. Uh, but yeah, motivation was just to finish. And then about a mile to go, I knew that because the first two miles and the last two miles were in town, in Stillwater. Outside of that, it was all gravel. So as soon as I crossed that gravel road onto, you know, asphalt, I knew right. that I was pretty close. And my body starts to shut down. Like mm. My body knows I'm close, but it, I'm like, I'm not there yet. Like, you know, keep going. So I kind of, my last two were a little bit slower, but uh, I tried to pass this guy coming into town. And this guy is, yeah, he's slightly overweight. He did not look like he should be running with ultra marathons. And you know, I, I'm getting up to him, and then he just he just kicks in and takes off. I'm like I don't have anything left. I'm only running at like a ten minute mile. I'm not running fast. And this guy just takes off, and I see him. He's like fifty yards ahead of me, and then we make that final turn, and I see the giant, you know, finish line, and I just kick kicked into Forrest Gump gear, right? And start, <laughs> start high, <laughs> high knee in it after him. And everyone just cheering on, everyone screaming. And like, you this guy you? must, yeah, I did, yeah. I caught him with about 20 yards to go. This guy must have thought they were cheering on him until I blew past, you know? <laughs> and I say blew past. I probably didn't run past him that fast, but in my head it felt like I was, you know, Usain Bolt kind of thing. Uh, that was kind of funny. And I said to him after, I said, you know, nice race, you know. And they kind of like took that as a small win. And like, he probably thought that was just some, kid who just kind of like 
<laughs> it's quite a funny thing, but yeah, after six and a half hours of running, it was nice to just get across that finish line and that's sit awesome. down. You know, I, I just want to say to anybody that's listening to this podcast, whatever you start, always cross that finish line and finish. It doesn't matter if you're the first place or if you are in 20th place. The goal is to finish. There's always going to be another race, so make sure you finish every time. You make that punctuation and put it behind everything that you that you say that you're going to do. That's just, And I got that from Stephen, not Stephen, but Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart had yeah. done a... Um, he was doing a motivational, you know, um, segment on his page. Not really a segment, but he was just talking to people on Instagram. And he was talking about punctuation. What are some of the punctuations in your life that you would put behind something that you want to do? In the something that I want to do. Uh, um, so the whole this whole race I ran, it's called the Mid South Gravel, and it's mainly a bike race. So the bike race is on, was on Saturday. And there's a 50 mile bike race and there's a 100 mile bike race. Wow. And the reason I didn't get in, I didn't get into the bike race, and that was the reason I did the run, was because the bike race sold out in seven minutes. Five hundred, no, over a thousand people rode the bike race. I'm glad this year I didn't do the bike race because it rained and it was miserable. You're riding back roads up and down hills, and I think 25% out of a thousand finished. So you got what, 200, whatever that is, 250 people out of a thousand actually finished the race. Wow. Because their bikes cracked out, they had all this mud, like it's, their bodies shut down, it was raining. Mm-hmm. The girl who won went straight to the hospital after she finished because she had mild hypothermia. Like these, and you're racing against some of the best athletes in the world. These guys should be in the Olympics or something. But I want to do the bike race next year. So that's one thing that's on, on the list is to complete. Um, I will complete a full marathon. Even though I've ran 31 miles, mm-hmm. I will run you know, the Oakland City Marathon. I plan to do it this year, but I think we're going to get postponed for next year. So uh, that that's one thing that's on the list. Uh, full? The full, yeah. Now that I've done 31 up and down hills. Right, right? I don't, 26 you know, I was just fun. like, it could be one of those, yeah. I just want to get warmed up kind oh, of days. Right. I'm going to get 10 in. Yeah, so I think that, do the full. Um, and then, and I like cars too, right? So I have like a dream, couple of dream cars, and that's on the list that I want to get to and work towards. And, and eventually, so... Oklahoma has like the longest drive rule section at Route 66. Mm-hmm. So I want to have like my own car and do a podcast tour you know, and then drive the, the car to do it. Nice. Uh, what kind so of car? AC Cobra. Oh. Blacked out. It's all blacked out. Nothing, no, no, no shiny, fancy stuff. Probably never going to wash it. It's, just, <laughs> it's not going to sit in the garage. It's not going to be a garage queen. It's going to be used. Uh, so one of those. Um, and there's a kind of famous Welsh movie that came out in the 90s called Twin Town. Terrible movie, but it's hilarious. About two twins who just kind of courts havoc in this town in Wales. And it's quite a famous Welsh movie. It's not famous outside of Wales. It's, it's not that good. Uh, but there's a scene in that they, they steal a uh, an AC Cobra and like tear up the hills. And that's there's a scene when I was a kid growing up. Like I would love to be driving up hills right now, like mm-hmm. in that car. So that's the reason for that. Uh, and then golf too. I want to continue to play golf and, and progress. And you know, I'd like to win the state amateur one day. I'm never going to turn pro, but Winning, I have a lot of events on the list that you know that I want to win to remind people that I'm still here. Because outside of college, and I haven't really done anything since golf, and since got golf in college. So yeah, it's got to remind people that it's still kicking. You know. So you were pretty good in college, I'm assuming. I yeah, I did okay. I, so my freshman year, I flew flew here from from Wales, and, and found out the day after I got here that I couldn't play my freshman year. Oh yeah, yeah which was a nice. Uh, was a nice surprise so sat my freshman year uh, they took a year of eligibility it wasn't like a redshirt they just they took a year um so my second year wasn't very good because i hadn't competed for a year i hadn't practiced competition uh, my junior year i got a lot better i won six of nine tournaments my junior year i won conference by nine nice. so that was a big that was a big uh, and i was quite in my head and my goals i won the first three events of the year my junior year and i said to my my goal list we're going to win conference by 10 and everyone's like, you're out of your mind. You're, you're not kind of big-headed. There's no way you're going to do that, blah, blah, blah. And I missed like a really short putt on the 10th hole of my last round. And 
and it was one of those putts you're standing over it mentally. You're like, I should stand, step off this and re, you know, refocus. Mm -hmm. I didn't. I missed it. Uh, and I won by nine instead of ten. So Nice. I mean, winning's winning, right? But when right. I set a goal to win by ten and to win by nine, you know, in my, in my own head, I was like, you know, that's not a failure, but you should have done this. There's always ways to learn. True. Um, I didn't speak about it out loud at the time because everyone's <laughs> just got their, you know, it's like, whoa, you just beat us by nine and you're pissed off, right? No, I'm not mad, but I, I said, you know, that was one of the notes I took away from that day. So that was good. My senior year, I didn't win, but I didn't never finished outside the top five, which, you know, I didn't win, but I came second by a single shot three times. Nice. And that's so painful. <laughs> you know, like one shot over three rounds. Right. That's a bit of a kick. So, um, got to regionals and then made it to nationals. So I played, um, you know, all through part of conference. Didn't win tournaments, but finished in the top five. Didn't win, didn't win regionals, finished in the top five. And I think I finished tied fourth at nationals. So didn't win, but like I, I was very consistent. My yeah, you kicked some butt. I did, yeah. So I have a conference ring and a few other trophies and stuff. All America stuff to go with it. But um, yeah, it's all on the wall in the office for, you know, grandkids or kids maybe one day or nephews <laughs> can come over and be like, oh, you used to play golf. <laughs> so yeah, it's there somewhere. That's but awesome. Now it's uh, just trying to get back into it and try and you know put some current trophies up there, current day and stuff. And that's Where can people that are listening today find you at? Find me, so they can find... Uh, if they're wanting to do photography yeah. or check out your podcast page, sure. where can they find so you? So Instagram, at This Is Oklahoma, everything everything is at This Is Oklahoma, Instagram, Twitter. Not really not really got much on Twitter, but there's something there. YouTube, the podcast is starting to drop on YouTube now, more videos. Uh, I'll start doing more kind of travel stuff. If, this tra you know, if we can get through this time at the moment and people can start hitting the road and restaurants open, so yeah, at this is Oklahoma on everything for that. Um, Bedford's cameras are amazing. For, yeah. You know they've helped me so much, and they continue to help me. They have a bunch of stores around the state. Um, so there's one on off May, you know, in the city. That that's a good place to go for your cameras. Uh, and then jump. I mean, everyone who everyone whose picture that I post, I tag them in it. So nice. if you're looking for good photographers, scroll through the feed. You know, and every photographer's tagged, and and they're all really nice people. You know, you got people who just take amazing drone photos and you've got people who just do great you know portraits whatever you're into there's probably people who in that in the feed who take photos there so definitely go there and then my personal page is mike dot hearn underscore i think at instagram just put in mike and you'll mike come up so it's a picture of me and my headphones on awesome. podcasting but yeah that's the main stuff's at this is oklahoma well mike i appreciate you coming to the podcast today and um having a great conversation Thanks, with man. me Everybody, this is Mike Hearn on Instagram. Be sure to check him out. Also, be sure to check out um, The Real World with Daryl Terrell on YouTube with Stephen Austin Films. Be sure to check out his Instagram. This is Daryl Terrell with The Real World, and we're out.